My name is Eleanor Tannercliffe and I'm a Legal Director at Hill Dickinson. In this video, I'll be explaining how ICBs can make robust legal decisions that will stand up to legal challenge. Decisions taken by an ICB can be challenged by bringing a judicial review claim. These claims are often referred to as JRs. A JR can be brought by anyone with an interest in the decision being made, such as a patient or a member of the public expecting to access services. A claimant can challenge a decision through raising legal questions about the merits of the decision they are complaining about. They can also raise legal issues about the process by which the decision was made. Challenges are more likely to be successful if they are about, are about process. This is because the courts generally defer to the judgment of NHS bodies if they are making decisions about the care pathway and how to allocate funding. Challenges about process can be brought at any point in the decision-making process. Once a decision has been taken, a JR challenge must be brought within three months. Sometimes the courts impose an even shorter deadline if a decision is particularly time-sensitive. The most common reasons why decisions made by NHS bodies are overturned by the courts are Firstly, failure to comply with involvement duties. Secondly, failure to comply with equalities duties. And thirdly, failure to comply with the organisation's own policies, constitution or assurances given to interested patient groups. Involvement duties are triggered as soon as an ICB begins to develop proposals that could affect the range of NHS services available or the manner in which they are delivered to individuals. It is therefore important to have a plan for involving patients and the public at an early stage. This should be coordinated with any of the other NHS organisations involved. Having a plan not only shows an ICB will comply with its involvement duties, it can also reassure patients and the public that they will have the opportunity to have their say. Involvement does not always mean a full 12-week public consultation, particularly when proposals are at an early stage. Instead, an ICB may choose to collaborate with local patient groups or Health Watch, or provide updates on developments rather than asking for feedback. The ICB will need to consider taking different approaches to different groups. Some groups will be harder to reach, others will require deeper engagement because they are more heavily affected. NHS England has published extensive guidance on complying with involvement duties. Moving on to the public sector equality duty. This is probably the area where there have been the most court judgments overturning decisions of NHS and other commissioners. The most common mistake for commissioners is not to appreciate the impact that their decision will have on a protected group. Carrying out an appropriate involvement exercise as I've just discussed Taking care to engage with hard-to-reach groups will help to guard against this. It is best to refer to the public sector equality duty in the ICB's documents. An assessment of equality impact should be carried out and considered by decision makers before any final decision is made. It is important to consider all of the options and acknowledge any adverse impact on particular groups. If a negative impact cannot be avoided, this should be acknowledged and a clear plan put in place for how the impact can be mitigated. There should also be a mechanism for reviewing the arrangements. It is particularly important to keep contemporaneous records of the consideration of equality issues. Again, the drivers for a decision should be expressly acknowledged, even if they are unpalatable. For example, if the need for a change is caused by financial constraints, this should be set out. As well as the groups protected by the Equality Act 2010, ICBs have duties to reduce health inequalities. These must also be complied with. NHS England has published more guidance on how to comply with these duties. Governance challenges include legal arguments about compliance with the ICB's constitutional documents, managing conflicts of interests, and failure to comply with assurances given to patient groups. An important way of defending such claims is to ensure that you have a clear audit trail of what decisions are taken, by whom and why they were made. This includes making sure that any working groups have clear terms of reference and that appropriate delegations are in place. If there are any observers contributing to decision making, 
but who do not have a say in the final output, for example clinical experts, it is important that everyone understands their role. If there are any conflicts of interest, these should be declared and managed in accordance with the ICB's policy. ICBs also need to make sure that outcomes are recorded at each stage of the decision-making process with a summary of reasons. If one of the reasons is lack of funding, this should be clearly stated. Any issues regarding conflicts of interest should be documented. To conclude, following these steps will reduce the risk of a JR about the overall decision-making process. They also mean that your substantive decision is robust and stands up to scrutiny. If you have any queries, you can contact us using the details set out below or through the Hilda Kinson website.